this is a global work. And whenever I'm comfortably situated in my home, I'm in the wrong place. I need to be where the people are. If you think the church has been fully restored, uh, you're just seeing the beginning. There's much more to come. It is as though he's been unleashed. I cannot get him to act his age. In fact, I'm highly suspicious of his birth certificate. He was foreordained to be the prophet of God on the earth today. He is uniquely uh, fit and uh, lively. Uh, and I think he just made the decision, we're gonna go. And the people responded. It was faith promoting for me and surely, surely was faith promoting uh, for the people who experienced it. I think it was faith promoting for President Nelson. He's gonna go to all of the world. He's gonna make more of these trips. To be with President Nelson is, it's like being with an old friend. I mean, he's so genuinely engaging. It's like he could be your grandfather and, or your father, you could just... You just talk to him. Just talk to him <laughs> and he very much reaches out to people, which is, I think, you know, just disarming that it, he makes you feel so comfortable. The people, their warmth, their love, their love of the Lord. So they welcome you in ways that you've never been welcomed before. They're saying, President Nelson, we welcome you home. I know some of them, I know their parents, and I know their grandparents. They feel like I'm part of the family, <laughs> and I do. I mean, I love these people. Families lined up on both sides of the street, waving and with posters and ribbons and banners. President Nelson would reach out and Sister Nelson would reach out of the window and wave to them. You could see the squeals of delight. It was such a tender, human tie that the Lord's prophet was waving to them and reaching to them and pointing to them. Hi, President. Hi, President. Hi, hi Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> it was really quite a thrill. To see the faithful members who come early, they sit, they wait. <laughs> They're showing such respect for the prophet and the Lord. Those dignified Tongan saints, they were there in the rain for two hours waiting to see the prophet and hear what he had to say to them. And that was just lovely. We love it when in these uh, venues where he said, is it all right if I speak with you in Spanish? And these huge smiles and then leaning forward in their seats and then just completely absorbed it. That has they been incredible. They blossom. <laughs> they just blossom. Con su permiso. Quisiera hablar en español. Uy, todos se asombraron. Creo que nadie imaginó que iba a hablar en español. Pero sí, fue algo muy especial. Como que, wow, el profeta habla en nuestro idioma. There is something very personal about uh, seeing the prophet and having him speak in your own country. And I think when he's there and when they come prepared, the Holy Ghost helps them to have something very special happen with them. And uh, when that happens, what could be more precious than that, to have a witness from the Spirit that this is the Lord's prophet? That's very special. 
I think it's a sign of how much he loves the members in this International Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He wants to be with them, travel to them, see them the way he has. Beautiful example. Everything we do, it is all about the Lord. It's always about where does the Lord need us to go? What does the Lord need us to do when we travel? I think of a statement by President Kimball. I should come and see this country sometime when I come back. You know, oh, yes. <laughs> it's not about sightseeing, it is about saint seeing. We have to realize that these are not generally Christian countries and they don't know what we're talking about when we say that God lives because they don't know God and they don't know Jesus Christ. And these dear souls who are searching for happiness, searching for joy, searching for meaning in life, don't know where to turn. And so our responsibility is to teach and to testify that God lives, Jesus is the Christ. And that he's not dead, he's not an icon on the cross. He's a resurrected Lord and he directs the work of his church. This is a faithful evening, and I have been assigned the task to introduce and present a brother of another mother, a different faith tradition, and of a different race. Hi, Mr. President. Yes. Hello, Amos. Good to see you again. How are you, dear friend? I'm doing fine. Good, good. I'd like you to meet my wife, Wendy. Oh, indeed. Hey, How nice are to you? Meet you. We had a most cordial, unforgettable experience with His Holiness. He was most gracious and warm and welcoming to President Ballard and me. I told him we were going to meet with hundreds of his Italian youth tonight. He said, you teach them to love their grandparents. <laughs> the moment when President Nelson actually embraced the Pope as we left was everything. I do believe that when you see the prophet in person, you feel something, his personalization, talking about their families, and then talking about the families in their country, and then talking about the poor and the needy and those who need humanitarian care. And they leave having felt like they were with a prophet. Our time together was marked by a feeling of mutual respect and a desire to link arms to see if we could capitalize on our respective strengths and help more people by working together. Simply stated, we strive to build bridges of cooperation rather than walls of segregation. President Nelson is a leader. He brings the love of God. He says strong families make strong communities. Strong communities make strong countries. Well, I've seen more perfectly how it's done or how it's done more perfectly. The president uh, has a gift for that, and I think all of us can cultivate that gift of caring and of uh, pure love of Christ in our lives. And I think that's what I want to have in my life, is a, is a constant caring, a consistent way of ministering. Well, we don't look alike, but the things that we have in common are much more important than the differences that we may have. So. Wherever the people are, they're God's children, and they're our brothers and sisters, regardless of nationality, race, color. When I learned more about President Nelson's background, I saw some incredible similarities. Our things in San Francisco. And then our two national hymns, Lift Every Voice and Sing, and Come, Come, You Saint. These two songs about a people who, in spite of being oppressed 
excel. And I had a wow moment when I reflected on the fact that Mr. Clayton wrote Come, Come, You Saints, which tells the story of the struggles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And in that song, they didn't get bitter. They became better and they endured. And they sang, come, come, ye saints. No toil or labor, fear. And I love that phrase that says, great shall be as your day. So gird up your lawns, fresh courage take. Our God will never us forsake. And soon we'll have this tale to tell. All is well, all is well. It can be well in this nation when we lock arms, as I locked arms with President Nelson, not as black and white, not as Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints, or Baptists, but as children of God who are about loving everybody and bringing hope, happiness, and good health to all of God's children. Young people come by the hundreds to these meetings, take notes, and they'll have better lives because of it. They're just so spectacular. When we've met with these smaller groups of youth, they are absolutely anchored. They're doing it. They're, they're having family home evening. They're in the scriptures. They're receiving their patriarchal blessings and finding great joy. It's incredible to see people from different places but with the same religion, you will feel connected. And it's incredible that the principle of our church is love everyone because Heavenly Father loves everyone. And that's the thing that impacted me the most, that that make me want to stay in church, stay with this big, great family. I feel that the church is, is a safe haven and that around us are a lot of people who don't believe in God and they don't have that common belief for that. And as I come to church, I'm able to interact with people who have that common belief and we're able to strengthen each other. Seeing the different cultures come together, you see that love that each and every one of us have and that we have that common theme that we are children of our Heavenly Father and that we're followers of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I love you. Okay, you kids all go to the meeting. Huh? <laughs> I think it was a particularly significant message at this point to have the president of the church come see a relatively small group and by his presence say, you matter. You're in our hearts, you're in our minds, in our prayers. The Lord is mindful of you and we're mindful of you. These youth are hungry for the words of the Lord. They're lifting themselves up above the mediocrity. It was a real thrill to be with them. I tried to look in their eyes and see what their mothers were like, <laughs> what their fathers were like. His personalization uh, and connecting with them I wish that you could be sitting where I am and see all the faces of, they light up like uh, like Christmas trees, you know what he says that. And then they lean forward in their seats and they listen very well. We saw the rising generation last night. Yeah. Uh, the youth that were there and 1,500 of them in the stake center, but broadcast to thousands more. And oh, they were they were so powerful, so strong. Uh, so grateful to be in the presence of a prophet, 
you know, they had their My Family booklets with them. They had their Strength of Youth pamphlets. These are really remarkable uh, young people. Just after hearing him speak, there's no way that you can negate the things that you believe after hearing someone like him testify of the truth of those things. They are critical to the future. They are pioneers, and they are, have a particular place, I think, in his heart and in his mind. As these young people become parents and grandparents, you can see the pyramid of posterity that will follow. No matter where the country is, what language they speak, or what flag they wave, they become good citizens. We get thanks for their good behavior. Our message is applicable to people of every nation, every kindred, tongue, and it's an invitation to come unto Christ and to let him make life better for you. I've just been so deeply touched at how the prophet of God ministers to 10,000 people and a single family that's grieving over the loss of their mother at the same time. After all, the good is done in this world person to person. It's not president to pope, it's one on one. I wanna get your name for you so I can pray for you and your doctors. Thank you. It's very uh, interesting to see that, uh, as you would expect, President Nelson is the center of attention, but he doesn't call attention to himself. He's always sending the love and the concern back to the people, and I think that's what they feel. It's about the people. In the end, it's all about people. And if we can minister, our life will have meaning. Tonight's visit, for example, Subandrio, who I've known for many years, introduced me to his 86-year-old mother tonight. And I asked her a question, of course, I was speaking English and she doesn't do English. This is my son. Oh, that's yeah. good. He's a good boy. <laughs> good boy. Those are, those are things that, that our columnists won't write about, but we, we feel it because we know these people, we love them, and we feel for them when they have pain, and we rejoice with them when they have joy. This is his work, and he's directing it, and we get to participate. It's pretty exciting, really. There is a, a sense of connection and of a covenant belonging together that uh, makes each one feel as though this is for them individually, for their families, and uh, for large groups, countries at the same time. That's a remarkable thing to feel and see. I don't think the Lord's interested really in how many members of the church we have. I don't think he cares whether we're a church of 16 million or 160 million. What he cares about is how many of you folks really want to come back home with me. We're helping to prepare the world for the second coming. We're also hoping to prepare the people for their second coming home. We wanted to just say to the people that we love them, we're glad you're members of the church. We're glad you love the Lord. And 
we just want to be with you.